Hello to my beautiful family of light. You know who you are. That's everybody that's here on the planet right now. You courageous and wonderful beings. I hope that you know by now that things will never go back to the way they were. That we are all becoming different people uh, and having different thoughts and wanting to change certain aspects of our lives. Well, <laughs> you've come to the right place. I can sympathize with you at least. <laughs> my name is Claudia and I want to welcome you to my channel. This particular uh, aspect of my channel has to do with the soul's journey into awareness. And that means that the human is becoming conscious of things that are hidden, that they can't see, that are outside of themselves, uh, that may be pressing in, or maybe you're feeling more free. Um, I don't know what your situation is, and it's okay. I don't need to know. My job is only to be here for you, um, to help you along the way if I can. And so you'll let me know about that, right? So in the last couple of videos, I explained, um, well, in the first video, I'm out of here, was a little girl's um, running away from home at the age, ripe old age, of three and a half. And in the next video, the uh, traumas that uh, had been inflicted to that point and beyond, so up to age five, pretty much continued. And, you know, when I say that, I say it with a little bit of a, um, I don't know how I want to put it, I wasn't aware of those things that were going on. I've um, had many long conversations with my mother, who is, who is now uh, long since passed, but uh, she explained a lot of things to me. And so these are some of these are her words because I have very few childhood memories. In the first video was a story called I'm Out of Here. You can find that a couple videos back. The second one was the foundation, uh, foundational years of a childhood are set by the age of five. And so that by that time, the uh, parents, <laughs> the, the children aren't necessarily going to have conscious awareness of these things. Uh, they're simply going to respond by their nature, what is built into them by now. And so uh, by the age of five, the child is going to begin behaving in uh, what it would be called uh, a way in which the foundation has been set for them and they will begin expressing their personalities and uh, some of the behaviors that are a result of how they've been raised, what culture they're in, parents, grandparents, whatever. This then will become part three. So we've had uh, uh, up to age five. So let's take a look at me <laughs> from age five or so, five to six, on up to around 11, because uh, lots and lots happened in that amount of time of which I wasn't aware of until you begin to get older and you start putting two and two together. And that happens in a lot of different ways. And this, that will be a little bit later, we begin to realize uh, the soul's nudgings of us to be um, good people, good humans, uh, to be kind and generous and those sorts of things. Okay, so uh, she's had a thorough beating by three brothers, and mom condoned that. <laughs> and probably when things calmed down and the boys started filing out, and she came in and saw a battered and bruised little girl, uh, who knows if she was regretful or not. She ne never did mention that. However, it's not really about that because that's a part of a story and we all have our story. I've mentioned that to you too. It is not ever about the story. It is about 
the foundations that are set, set the people that we become, and how we either fight against ourselves or we begin to work with another aspect of ourselves. So that's where I'm coming from. All right. At age five, the little girl had a huge change and she began to run with the wolves, <laughs> with the boys. She began to climb trees, to wanna play baseball and kick the can and hide in scary places that, that caused her to shake in her boots. Uh, and this, this was uh, the ultimate change. Uh, and as time progressed, it was, it took some time, but mom began to realize that her little girl could not be interested in playing with dolls. Her little girl did not want to wear dresses. Her little girl um, was hardening, was toughening up in, uh, in ways that when you decide you don't want to be a girl, you're, you're a girl, but you decide it's safer to, uh, to be a boy. And so you stop doing things that little girls would do. And I did not have many girl friends. So um, that was one aspect of things. This marked a big change in my life. And in fact, it wasn't until I was into my 40s, <laughs> probably 50s when I began to realize that's what had happened during that from that point on of getting beat up by the boys it wasn't safe to be around boys and not to be able to um, be tough like them so I learned how to play uh, kick the can with the boys to to be to play baseball in fact uh, by the time I became uh, a late teenager, early 20s, I was invited to play with a quadruple A softball team. <laughs> the reason I, I didn't end up doing that, this is the funny stuff, is that, um, and they were trying me out in all these different positions and I could catch and pitch and work first base and work the outfield uh, because I had grown up with boys. So I learned how to play football. I learned how to play tennis uh, in an aggressive, aggressive manners. And I was fast, I could run, I was uh, strong and uh, feisty. So here I am uh, out in, uh, they had me at catcher and decided they needed a, an outfielder. And so they put me in the outfield uh, once to try me, or maybe it was first base, that's what it was, first base. And I was watching the runner. <laughs> one, of the, one of my team members threw the ball at me and it knocked, hit me right here and knocked me out. <laughs> I said, this is too much for me. And I didn't uh, keep playing after that, not at that level. I. I you know, I, I'm a fun person. <laughs> I want to do things. I golf and I still uh, can can play, you know, all kinds of things. But I don't want to be that competitive anymore. It was, it was too uh, unbecoming of a lady, <laughs> which I've been working many, many years to become. Anyhow, uh, so here I am, let's say about 9, 10 uh, and I'm just going to say at age 10, uh, and I was pretty skinny uh, up until till that point. And the pictures just show it. I'm just like skinny as a rail. And mom loved camping. So we went to Sun Lakes one year over in Washington State. And, uh, and or no, excuse me, it was closer. Well, it was one of the lakes out in the desert. And... Um, the boys were showing me how to cast so I could learn how to fish. And my line got wrapped around the limb of a, of a big limb of a tree. And, um, you know, you could not walk away from that. So they made me climb the tree and get up there and, you know, try to untangle it. 
So while I'm up there and the boys are all down below and they're hemming and hawing and maybe helping a little bit, mom rang the dinner bell. And, um, and you don't leave, you're not gonna leave a fishing pole in line hanging there while you run off to eat, but the boys did. And so I finished doing what I was supposed to do, came down with the fishing pole and the line. And when I got to the picnic table, now, by now, there are eight children and uh, probably a couple of kids along for playmates. And when I got there, there was no food left. There wasn't a, there wasn't a, a crumble, right? You've got all those boys. And, um, and I looked at mom and I said, well, you know, you didn't save me something. We, they had chicken, they had ribs, they had, you know, all, all the picnic accoutrements, uh, probably potato or some kind of salad, watermelon, uh, beans, uh, biscuits. My mother was an amazing cook and, um, and there was simply not a drop of food left on the table. And mom looked at me like, how could I forget? And what I did was do what probably any child would do. And that was, I looked at her and I decided, I'm in the wrong family, period. This is not how, you know, how could you forget me, is the thought that ran through my mind. How could you forget me? And, uh, and that was kind of the look mom was giving me was, how could I forget her? Well, needless to say, I had a peanut butter sandwich. And what I, the decision I made that day was that, uh, was to impact me. I'm, I'm not going to tell you that, that just yet. We got to get there. Um, but I made a decision that day and in that decision, it, which stuck with me until I was well into my, well, it must have been fifties and I started to gain weight and I began to put on layers uh, as barriers and protection against the outside world because it had become uh, too harsh. And what I mean by that is we formulate, we make decisions based on things that have impacted us that we feel are harmful. You know, and, and what is that? Well, if you if somebody hasn't remembered that you're going to come to the table and eat, it means you're not loved. At least that's how I uh, translated it. So I lived with that for a long time. And of course, you naturally uh, make some decisions about it. And one of them was it was too hard to feel that lack of love. And so you put barriers you start building walls around your heart. You build barriers so that the bad stuff can't get in. And if it tries to get in, it simply can't hurt you. Well, you know, we, we progress on down the line there. Uh, and, and so that was at age 10, I believe. And then my birthday is in February. And so here comes February along six, seven, eight months later. And, uh, oh, I didn't have a birthday party. I didn't have a gift. I didn't get a hug. I didn't get a, here's further confirmation to a child who is just like by now desperate to be loved, um, that you really are in the wrong family. <laughs> You really do want to run away and go someplace, but you wouldn't have a clue where you could go. I mean, what are you going to do? So I'm going to just tell you a little bit of back, back up for that right now. You know, in fact, I'm not. I'm going to save this for the next video because uh, there is a foundation to this. 
and uh, I'm at about 15 minutes. I don't like going much over 15 or 16 minutes, so I'm going to wrap it up here. We'll continue part three in the next video. You have to stay tuned if you want to know more. <laughs> and you can laugh and smile along with me. So what I want to say to you once again, I should have started the video this way. I hope that you have a piece of paper and a pencil and that you're writing down a few of your um, uh, memories from your childhood, good, bad, or indifferent. It doesn't matter. I, I no longer place significance on good or bad. It's, it's a part of who I am and how I got to where I am. Uh, and so however you deemed it at the time, good or bad, difficult, and try and assess, a, 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 um, add a feeling to what you were experiencing in that event that you've written down. So the event, if you have a timeline about the age, an event and the feelings that went with it. For me, it was uh, by age 11, I was getting pretty close to despair. Uh, you're not loved is the worst. And if you don't have, if, if somebody important doesn't remember your birthday, <laughs> like your mother, <laughs> oh my goodness, <laughs> can we just try this? Can we back up and start all over again? <laughs> There's got, gotta be a, a, a family um, out there that that would that wouldn't happen in right anyhow so here we are here's here's me 11 years old and really feeling an outcast very much an outcast so get your paper keep keep making notes and write jotting down memories and don't hesitate uh, to send me um, a note about that you can get a hold of me via my um, website address, right? Claudia at ClaudiaCaraba.com. You'll see it in the description down below. And I'd love to uh, read your comments, read your questions, and, um, and visit with you a little bit if that's what you'd like. So, okay, so that's it for today. We'll continue the story and um, however grisly it gets. <laughs> and I want you to know, I love you. I love you this much. I can't even begin to express how much this, these arms wanna hug you and hold you and bless you and thank you. And I do, I send that out with my intentions that you are worthy of all the love that you get in your life. And some of it's coming to you from me right now. Okay, anything more you want to know about me, you can find in the description below. And uh, like I say, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me. Please don't hesitate to um, like, subscribe, and share. When you do that, information gets out to others who have, their stories are going to be way more horrible, I'm sure, than mine. Um, but they have a sympathetic ear right here. All right, so take care, and in the meantime, till I see you next time, be well, be safe, and be happy. Thank you so much for joining me.